So here's the outline of kind of what we're going to go over today. I'll touch base on everything really quick. Uh, wax ups, that's where we're going to start, is we're going to start putting teeth in people's face. And so I'm going to show you how to kind of go from globally put, putting an arch in down to dialing in specific teeth so that we can do various things with that wax up. Because that's really the start of all of this is like, where did the teeth go? And then we can go back from there and do what we need to do. Um, dental photography. So we're going to touch base on that. That's an important aspect of knowing where the teeth are going to go. Um, I'm going to show you a few different applications of photography. Um, I'm not a photo expert, and I'm not here to like, you know, show you how to you know, make these incredible photos, but nice photos that you can use for planning and for you know, patient presentation. And so something that's simple that anybody can do. Um, 3D face scanning. This is a really fun one because you, know, you can use this again for diagnosis or for case acceptance because it's that patient perception of, he's got a 3D scan of my face on the computer and he knows where the implants are going to go because of that, my face. Like, that's not common. I mean, you, you know, they're not going to find that in most places. So that's, again, another aspect that's going to set you apart and it's going to help you, you know, do more predictable wax ups. Um, because, you know, when you're doing, you know, when you did dentures in school, you know, you, you had a face bow, you had all these different aspects and it's like you're marking these landmarks, but now you can just have it digital on a screen. Pretty simple. Um, so we're going to use uh, intraoral scanning for vertical dimension increase. I'm going to talk about that. Vertical dimension increase is an important aspect of full arch dentistry. Um, I mean, we open bites all the time, and it's fine, and it's helpful. It's usually always helpful. Um, I mean, does anybody here have a story of a case where they like opened a bite up and it just like had this huge negative impact? I mean, they scare you about that in school, like, don't do it, don't do it, don't open the bite. But um, generally, I found that my patients have better TMD, they have better airway, better occlusion. I mean, it's just, so, it, it, you know, increasing the vertical is, is important, um, and it gives you more restorative space, because most of these patients have had some sort of collapse. Um, you know, we, some, you know, it was funny when Dr. Sullivan came here and taught, you know, that I still remember that one case, you know, it's massive vertical collapse, and he's like, no, he hasn't lost any vertical. You just, you just need a crown length and everything, and just put crowns on everything. I was like, okay. But we've talked about that before. So vertical dimension increase is important, um, and we can do that both in our scanning protocol and digitally. Most of you guys have seen that it's always more accurate to scan at the desired vertical increase rather than going and arbitrarily opening it digitally because that hinge can be all over the place. And so if you, the best thing to do is really just to capture that at the time the patient's in the chair. No matter what you're doing, a splint, um, crown and bridge, implants, capture that in the chair. Um, Blue Sky Bio, that's the software we're gonna try to stick in. I wanna try to come up with every application that I teach, trying to keep it as close into the Blue Sky software package as possible. Um, you know, the very first session we did D3 splint, got a lot of feedback that that software was difficult to, to use, and it is because it was just, you know, it's one guy that created that software. So Blue Sky is, for the most part, pretty simple, pretty streamlined. Everybody's done really well utilizing that. So we're going to try to keep everything we can within that software as much as possible. There is going to be a little bit where we will have to veer outside of that, um, but we're going to try to minimize that, and that's going to be my goal. Um, Snap-on smile design and printing. This is, this, is, this is a really, really fun application of dentistry um, to be able to use that for patient case acceptance. You guys know um, Brian Harris? Yeah. So he's the cosmetic guy, right? And so he still teaches chair-side mock-ups for case buy-in. You know, patient comes in, they're kind of on the fence, and he'll just grab a bunch of composite and flow bolt and lay it all over the teeth and, you know, take... 20 minutes, I don't know, whatever he takes, and he'll do like a little mock-up and just stick it on there. Um, I don't, I mean, I don't, you know, I don't love doing that. I mean, it's okay. You know, some guys love doing that, but I mean, it's fun to have that pre-made where the patient can come and just sit down in the chair and you're like, oh, I've got this little, this little 3D shell and just have them slide it on their teeth and, and smile. Um, chair time is, is cool to reduce. I like to do that. I like to 
keep things in front of the computer rather than share time personally. Um, just a little less stressful for me. Um, and so that's a really cool way to get case, you know, case acceptance. I think I told the story too of, you know, I did this for a guy and, you know, he had worn vertical detention, he needed his bite opened. So we, I did that and I made him a little shell and I just slid it on, he's smiling, he's like, wow, that, that looks good. And he, he wasn't really ready for dentistry. He didn't really want anything. Um, slid it on and then I said, okay, go home, you know, go show your wife, you know, because they can take that home and they can take it on and off. They can get the spouse involved and, yeah, they called that, that same day and both of them wanted full mouth rehabs. So both the husband and wife, just by seeing that little shell. And so that was a really cool way to show patients what they, what they need because they, really, they might not even know what they want. And it's just something you can slide on the teeth. It's really cool. Um, intro to mesh mixer function. So mesh mixer, um, we're going we're gonna to touch on that. And it's going, that's the software that we're going to use to go outside of Blue Sky Plan. Um, we're going to minimize as much as we have to do in that software, but I think it's important just to touch on it and just to show you a few functions because Blue Sky is great and you can do so much in Blue Sky, but there's still a little bit where you need that, that editing aspect of a software like Mesh Mixer. So Mesh Mixer is a free software. It's basically just like, you remember the application Paint back on Windows? It's just like how, you know, it's like, oh, I need to draw something on Windows really quick and you open up Paint and draw. It's kind of like that for 3D editing, and it's a pretty simple way just to manipulate and edit 3D files, so we're going to touch base on that. Um, that'll, that'll be before lunch, so basically we're going to try to get through all of that before lunch, take a lunch break, and then we're going to come back and then dive into digital dentures. So digital dentures is something that I hope you guys all leave with, like a, you know, you guys are, are, are utilizing that. So I'm hoping you guys get back and start doing some interim dentures um, digitally. I still, um, I'm still just using them for interim dentures. Um, I, haven't, I haven't sent an interim denture to a lab since starting to do this. So it does work and it works well. I haven't incurred a single lab cost for an interim denture yet. Um, nor have I had to wait for a lab to fabricate an interim denture. So we don't have a lab in, our, in, in, in office. So we gotta send it out and there's some time. And you know, we know that time can be a barrier to, to treatment acceptance. You know, sometimes patients just make that decision and like, sometimes you gotta get them in pretty quick, you know, cause they just, stuff, life changes, you know? They come in, they, hey, I, I'm ready to get my teeth out. What, I can't get in for two weeks cause you gotta go send out for an interim denture? I don't even know if I'll want this in two weeks, you know? So uh, the ability to have things done in, you know, in the office next day, I mean, it's, it's really not hard to have an interim denture ready for the next day, if, you know, if it came to that. Um, so I haven't, yeah, so I haven't had to send one out. Uh, I haven't had one break. I haven't had a patient had an issue with it. Um, they reline well. Um, so it's been really good for interim dentures for me. And the teeth, I found that the teeth are where they need to be because I set them. It's easier for me to set the teeth digitally than to send impressions to a lab and have them grind the teeth off of a model and then set teeth. I've had, you know, lots of cans and midlines and various things. And it's just an inter interim, but still, it's nice to be able to have that um, uh, more accurate. So for dentures, we're going to talk about the three different types of printable interims and go over pros and cons. Uh, we're going to talk about how we get the data into the software because dentures require a vestibule, you're doing more soft tissue, and soft tissue is difficult to scan. So it does great with the arch of teeth, but it's a little bit more difficult to scan. So um, we're gonna talk about designing them, what materials we use to print them, how we print them, and then touch on the desktop scanner. So I brought the scanner, and so we're gonna talk about using a desktop scanner. You don't have to have one to do digital dentures, um, but it's nice. They're cool. It's nice to have, and we're going to go over like the differences between that and, and your intraoral scanners. All right, any questions about the outline? Any questions that, uh, anything you guys want me to touch base on? <laughs>